Welcome back to this edition of KTN Sunrise Live. I'm Edith Kimani. Now, the Kenyan Development Blueprint, or Vision 2030, envisages an electorate that is informed. And part of this is to inform them through civic education. For this reason, KTN, with the Ministry of Justice, will be coming to you this and every Tuesday to bring you just that. You've seen the bumper, it's saying it's time for Kuji Nice with K Nice. That's exactly what we'll be talking about. And this morning, I'm joined by the PS in the Ministry of Justice, Mr. Gishira Gifara. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. I'm also joined by Okero Tieno, who is a project manager for K Nice. So perhaps we should begin there. What exactly is K Nice? What does it stand for? Um, K Nice stands for Kenya National Integrated Civic Education Program. Uh, basically K for Kenya, which means that we, the issues that we discuss in civic education are issues that affect this country, our, our country, and how the constitution seeks to address the issue. N is national, again, meaning that the issues that we want to discuss are of national nature and appreciating that we are people of <clears throat> different nationalities and ethnicities that live within the boundary of Kenya. So even as we address the provisions of the constitution, we address them within the context of the issues that affect the nation. Integrated means um, there are two ways. As a program, we are integrated in the sense that we bring together ministries, departments and agencies that in the front line in the implementation of the constitution, but we are also integrated with this, a civil society organization, faith-based organizations, and also the private sector. But we are also integrated in our methodology, mm -hmm. how we choose to disseminate civic education. We integrate civic education on the constitution with um, using the media for instance that's why we are here we develop civic education materials which we also distribute to all our partners we work through civil society organizations and we also seek to bring the public servants into the forest so that they too can know about the the civic education then the c and the e mm -hmm. which is civic education basically implies that civic education is for posterity it's for this generation, the next generation, and the next generation. So it's education for posterity. And what is also unique about k is that you started by introducing the Vision 2030. Vision 2030 is about knowledge-driven economy. Mm -hmm. We are about a constitutionally empowered citizenry that can actively uh, implement and own this very beautiful constitution that was promulgated in August 27, 2010. All right. Uh, Mr. Tino has outlined what k -Nice is, and he's saying that the plan is to get an informed citizenry. But why is the Ministry of Justice involved in this? How is it tied into all of this? Uh, primarily because um, without uh, adequate awareness uh, of all Kenyans, it's not possible to effectively implement the constitution. And because the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs is responsible for Im effective implementation of the Constitution, we were then given the responsibility by the government to spearhead the national effort for civic education uh, through a cabinet decision. Uh, after that, we then constituted a mode stakeholder uh, management uh, team, uh, which oversees the implementation of the National Civic Education Program. Uh, we developed a national long-term a uh, strategy for civic education uh, that covers about uh, 15 years mm -hmm. to come. Uh, so it's not a one-off or a hit and run kind of effort right. uh, as previously uh, was the case. Uh, it's a, a plan with short-term outcomes that you want to achieve, uh, medium-term outcomes you want to achieve, and also long-term. All right. Outcomes. Um, so what are the short-term goals in the ministry, particularly with canines? The, the main goals for the short term is to prepare people to effectively participate in the coming general elections uh, in terms of them understanding uh, what does the constitution say about the various positions uh, that uh, people will be standing for in the next elections. 
uh, how will those uh, new structures uh, in the devolved government function? Mm -hmm. uh, what does the constitution expect Kenyans to achieve uh, in terms of their Bill of Rights, the, the rights that they have, new rights they have been given, uh, in terms of gender equality, uh, in terms of uh, the judiciary, uh, in terms of uh, the reformed executive, in terms of the new parliament, how will it operate? Uh, so that with that knowledge, they then are able to decide what kind of leadership are they looking for? Uh, they are also able to decide how will they exercise their various uh, rights and obligations. And then also what responsibilities do they have under the new constitution? Okay. Um, now the PS is talking about they, they, and he really means you and I. So if you have any questions regarding this topic, 8040 is our SMS number. You're welcome to ask any questions and uh, raise any issues that you might have in the course of this interview. Uh, but the PS is saying that this was instituted by government through an act mm -hmm. of cabinet, but not a lot of people know that. When was K9 instituted? When was it created? <coughs> Actually, in 2010, after the promulgation of the new constitution in August, uh, government, through a cabinet decision, mandated the ministry uh, to coordinate uh, the civic education, national civic education program, so that Kenyans would effectively, from an informed platform, participate in the implementation of the constitution. So in October of the same year, the ministry then convened other ministries like the Ministry of Local Government, Office of the President, Office of the Prime Minister, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Lands, and they formed an interministerial uh, committee chaired by the Ministry of, of Justice to begin to design a strategy and a framework for rolling out this national civic education campaign. But actively, uh, civic education, k as it exists today, was launched on the 16th of March uh, this year at, uh, at the KICC. Okay. And since the launch, what has k been able to achieve? Oh, we've achieved a lot in it. <clears throat> it uh, I'll, t I'll step back and tell you how does k operate. Mm -hmm. We operate in five ways. We offer civic education for public servants. Um, we partner with Kenya School of Government, and thus far, especially during the first phase, which ran between April and the end of June, we've been able to train 1,200 senior public servants. Uh, this will be public servants just beneath the permanent secretary, that job, jobs group R2T. Mm -hmm. 1,200 have been trained. Um, in the first phase, again, we were able to work with 36 non-state actors, uh, civil society organizations in the 47 counties offering civic education program. We had almost over 2,500 um, public workshops offered in the entire country by the non-state uh, actors who are identified through a very open, competitive, and transparent procurement system funded by government. Uh, I think it's very important for Kenyans to know that for the first time, government is actually funding non-state actors to over civic education. Now, the third way in which you operated it is we have a website. In this website, we seek to reach Kenyans in diaspora and Kenyans within the country, and especially the youth who can now get into our website, www.knights.go.ke. Mm -hmm. They can tweet, they can Facebook us, they can YouTube us, they can download all information, including the Constitution, uh, from our website. We also develop materials, which is very important. Some of them, we have them here, that we've developed. Kenyans can then, from uh, read our materials, engage, interrogate it, and use it in the announcement of a constitutional uh, knowledge, so knowledgeable society. Okay. So, so those are some of the things. I like that idea of the e civic education, where they sort of just there's a constitution on the net, and so they're able to access you through that. Mm. Uh, but when we speak of civic education, I think a lot of people don't really know what exactly happens. What happens in, in these forums when you meet the civil servants, when you meet these people on the internet? How does it work? Uh, basically, it's a forum for exchange of information. Uh, where we will bring people who are knowledgeable on the various aspects of the Constitution, whether legal issues, whether economic issues, whether planning issues, uh, who then explain in very simple language uh, what the provisions of the Constitution say and what those provisions uh, mean uh, for you as a citizen. 
uh, we then provide a forum for the citizens to ask questions, uh, which we respond to. Uh, we also leave them with uh, some simplified materials, mm -hmm. uh, which they can refer to uh, and easily understand uh, what the constitution is about. Uh, so also on the website, you can ask questions uh, and actually get responses on the website. Okay. Um, you did say that you're bringing in quite a number of people who are informed on the constitution on various aspects, but when you're asking from the internet, who responds? Is it the same people? There's a standby team. Uh, of specialists on the different issues uh, that you respond on a fairly short time. Uh, normally within 24 hours you'll get your response. Okay. Uh, and then apart from what uh, Okera has explained, uh, we're also using the FM stations uh, to carry out uh, civic education. Uh, and this is in the mother tongue of uh, the uh, various languages. Uh, so Wanjiko can actually now access civic education in her own language. Mm -hmm. Uh, and here we bring, again, experts who are uh, professionals in their areas, but also who fully understand their mother tongue. And they're able to explain to their communities uh, in their own language what the constitution says. Uh, and also people are able to call and ask questions, uh, either live or even after uh, a program is done, they ask questions which are then responded to in the following program. Okay. Um, this all sounds very interesting, but despite all these efforts, there's somebody somewhere who will still not be able to get to a radio station, not watch a TV, doesn't have internet, and doesn't have a person around them who understands the constitution. Do you then go to the rural areas, to the towns, to the estates, to get to people for the civic education? <clears throat> to the extent that it's possible, we are able to. But what we are telling Kenyans out there, in Kenya is mapped out in 47 counties. Mm -hmm. We now have non-state actors, about 95 civil society organizations that are going to offer, indeed are beginning, are offering civic education because the first two of the civic education program at the county started on the 15th of October. So in every county, we have three organizations offering civic education. So they can be able to access uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, these organizations. We have them on our website. We will put them in the print also at some point so that Kenyans get to know. And as also the PS has, uh, has observed, we offer civic education through the vernacular FM stations. Mm -hmm. And we've engaged 31 vernacular FM stations and five television stations. So we've stretched ourselves to the maximum possible so that every Kenyan can have the opportunity to access civic education. Okay, you've said um, in every county <coughs> there'll be at least three organizations. Yes. Um, which ones? Do you have examples? Uh, we have examples like the, <coughs> the non-civic education providers, for instance, the Supreme Council of, of, Mus of Muslims. We have the Catholic uh, Justice and Peace Commission. We have Kituo Chasharia. We have the uh, International Commission of Jurists. These are organizations that are seasoned uh, in civic education uh, provision. And I'm just saying just to mention but a few. Right. There are 95 of them. Okay. Yes. Um, so does this mean that if any Kenyan sees any of these organizations in their city, their town, their rural area, they can just walk in, ask questions, and they'll have someone to respond to them? Yes, and there are, there are specific uh, forums that are being organized mm -hmm. and publicized uh, through the media uh, in the counties. Uh, so that when we do these FM uh, station uh, programs uh, in their mother tongue, they are then advised when the forums will be coming to their area. Uh, so they, they then are preparing for, for that. Uh, then beyond the organizations that are working directly with Kenais, we are also partnering with other organizations that have been carrying out civic education, including Amkeni mm -hmm. uh, and Uraya. Uh, they are part of the, this effort. They actually sit uh, in the steering committee of canines. Uh, we are also partnering with the other organizations, the church, uh, which has quite a big grassroots uh, yeah. reach, uh, and also the Muslim faith. Uh, and we believe with all these integrated efforts, uh, we can reach people in a much more effective manner than ever before. We are also starting a joint uh, effort with the uh, Electoral Commission, the IEBC. Uh, the IEBC will focus on voter education, uh, which is a, a more focused area on how to vote. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but we'll continue doing the wider uh, civic education which deals with how the constitution works. Okay, um, and earlier you had said that this is not a sort of hit and run project, it's going to be there continuously for a long time. And you also mentioned that you have short, medium and long term goals. Yes. Um, do you have them in blocks of years and what do you hope to achieve within the first set of years? Yes, the, the first uh, uh, one, one to two years is what we call the short term uh, uh, phase. Uh, where we, as I indicated, we are basically preparing Kenyans to first have a broad understanding of the constitution uh, and also to prepare for the forthcoming general elections. The next one is uh, between three and five years. That's the next phase, mm -hmm. uh, which comes, starts after elections. Uh, and this one basically is to understand how the new structures of the constitutions are working, constitution are working, uh, particularly the structures of the devolved government. So we'll go out there and explain to people how does the Senate work, mm -hmm. uh, how will the governor work, uh, how do the county assemblies work, how do the wards representatives perform their duties. All this is in the next uh, phase. The longer term phase is to institutionalize the civic education within the school curriculum uh, and also make it uh, a day-to-day experience wherever you are right. uh, so that uh, it will be a requirement uh, for you to be examined at all levels from pre-primary to university mm -hmm. on civic education all right. uh, and, and that will ensure that it becomes part and parcel of our lives. Okay, um, we're just about to go into a short commercial break, but before we do that, I do have to ask, um, why now? Why is it that uh, civic education is becoming a big issue for government? Well, previously, we had civil society groups come in and do that. People might, um, they must wonder. Yes, uh, we have actually explained that uh, everywhere we have gone, also on our website, mm -hmm that the reason why we need a concerted effort led by government, because it's only government that has the enough resources uh, for this kind of massive exercise, uh, is because of the fundamental changes that have been brought by the new constitution. Uh, whenever societies undergo very massive changes, they require preparedness. And this is the same with all societies. Uh, Germans did this after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a national civic education which still continue to this day. Uh, the Japanese also did this after the Second World War. Uh, we have national civic education also in African countries which have undergone major changes, including Ghana, uh, which are national uh, efforts and permanent efforts. Like Ghana have a, a commission on civic education, uh, which is funded by the government. Uh, so it's an experience that uh, other countries have gone through and has proved worthwhile. All right. Um, let's now take a short commercial break, but remember to keep sending in your questions. Remember, the government is using money to educate you, and a part of this is coming into the TV stations and allowing them um, a, 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 and allowing yourselves to ask questions to them. So do send in those questions. 8040, again, is our SMS number. If you're on Twitter, at KTN Kenya is our handle. We'll be right back. <laughs> Nice, na nice, we yell away. Keep on our way. 